Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the channel. We are doing a Celtic Mind podcast after so many um, months of not doing one. Lewis is actually in one this time. Hello. We've got a lot of things to talk about, guys. Hopefully, you have enjoyed. And I'm the, in person, actually. Yeah, the new the Discord. Uh, yeah, Discord. The new um, uh, the new intro and such. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. Uh, but anyway, guys, there is only 24 hours on recording this until um, we face FC Michelin Champions League qualifier round two, Lewis. We have a lot of things to talk about. As I said yesterday's video, guys, I'm very nervous when I'm like, I am very worried about Celtic going at this because mm. they're not prepared again, once again. But we do see a feature, um, a signing, guys. It was unexpected, like the most unexpected sign we've seen in the world. Um, <laughs> there was no links at all to him. There was no leaks at all. It was on Friday there. Um, opened my phone, and this guy Kyogo Furu Furuhashi. Um, has signed for Celtic. Now he won't future in the first leg as pandemic restrictions uh, wreak havoc with transfer plans. But it's the same story if Carl Stalfelt, you know, he arrives soon, he'll solve it, he'll potentially solve the the centre back position Lewis. Yeah. But what I'm gonna ask you first going into this podcast, Lewis, what's your thoughts on um Kai Kyogo Furuhashi? What's your thoughts on him? He's a good goal scorer, like Iniesta says it as well. Yeah. And that the team's gonna miss him so I don't know much about him, so I'm just gonna say I think he, I hope he'll be good. Yeah, I, I explain what I think. I thought, guys, on Friday, I thought that potentially it's going to be good because we're going into the market of where Ange Postecoglou was his best, right? And you're going to get some bargains over there, of course. And this guy here, he's got 15 goals in 21 mm. games, Lewis. That's some stat. And you're the man of the stats. You like your stats yourself. Yes. Just I do. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, same story as also Carl Starfield Lewis, so um well it's sort of the done deal for Beats One Man who said that, but it will all take time for the official announcement to come out. He won't feature at all in this round two at all unless he comes in somehow before the second leg, you know what yeah. I mean? Um there's issue now, as I said, I explained yesterday with guys with Fraser Foster Lewis. What I have obviously said my opinion on it, but again, what's your opinion on Fraser Foster potentially Celtic want him back again or this goalkeeper situation now? Well, I think it'd be good. Now just wait till yeah. Uh, well, I explained my opinion yesterday, but listen, you go. Anyway, I think he'll be. I hope we get him back. Like, sure, he didn't leave on great terms, but can you blame him? He's, he, he was the best goalkeeper for Southampton by a mile while he was on the Well, own. Yeah. I did make the point that um, that a lot of fans will probably agree with me with, where um, he didn't want to stay for the crucial stage of 10 in a row. Which, on one hand, I get that he wants to stay for Southampton hmm. where he could get first team football, but if he went to Celtic and got 10 in a row, he'd probably be part of the historic team. Hmm. That's where I don't get him. That's that's where I don't get a point of Fraser Foster, right? But, I move on to another transfer trace for right back, because we're hmm. oh, the depth for right, right back, Lewis. So we're looking at Ra Ralston. I think he's had too many chances, mate, and I did explain that in the other day's video when I was very worried about Celtic Football Club where they're he heading in this direction. Just like me, right back to be very good job and a half. Um, Lowe actually have entered the race mm. for Brandon Sobby. He's obviously a Ren player. Um, he's on Ange Post College radar, but it looks like the 90 year old is understood to be available for around 4 million as a defender approaches the final year of his contract. Mm, not bad. Uh, a French newspaper, I'm not going to pronounce it because I'm not French, <laughs> claimed that Celtic would have fight have to fight it out with Watford and Syria side Undis. Undis, I think it's it. Oh, yeah. But it now appears with another club obviously leading the chase with Lowe. Um, but Celtic have agreed 4.5 million for Swedish defender Carl Stahlfeldt. What are you making that Lewis? Obviously we got a defender and I don't know what height he is but he seems that he's decent now. I think we're just, potentially just waiting on for the the present also for Chris, uh, Christopher Ayer but he was also just waiting on the money. Yeah. What are you making that? Right, so far we have all. two centre backs. Like, let's think about it this way who are any good. So him coming in is yeah. already a good, we have a much needed depth. Yeah. Um, because obviously I know you lose your highly rated the young players. You like Welsh, of course, at that right centre back. It's Azzy, but yes, uh, was it yesterday? No, Saturday when I watched the pressing game, he was very shaky. He played. Ange Postecoglou played a four three three. Now it looked like to me that he played Ozazi at right centre, like the right kind of mm. centre back position. Right, he didn't suit that at all. He looked shaky. He looks like he can't put up a fight against. It was a really good. I can't remember the player for pressing, but he was really yeah. good actually. Um, put a big aerial battle with him and it's as he, he's got to do a lot better um so yeah before we move on Lewis that pressing game right yeah I'll talk about transfers in a wee minute right that pressing game right 
And obviously, like, if, I don't know if you've seen highlights yet, but do you know what impressed me, right? Fans are bad, of course, two, yeah. over 2000, right? But impressed me, Barkas. He pulled off two good, really good saves. And I'm going to put the clips on now, guys, so just watch that a second, then we'll get back to it. It's been a bright start here from North End as it's sent in. Four pots this time. Great save by the goalkeeper. And uh, it is uh, North End denied by Barkas, the Greek goalkeeper. That was fantastic save by Barkas. A really good play as well. Good ball into the box. An excellent save from the goalkeeper. The Celtic legend in Scott Sinclair. And here he is now trying to push on against Walsh and he's going around the goalkeeper Sinclair. It's another good save. But he could have gone down there, Scott Sinclair. He's asking the question. He stayed at his feet to try and finish it off. And the goalkeeper, Barkas, made his. You think? So, you've seen the clips earlier. What do you make of. You think, you think Barkas is going to come back to the best you know, keeper he was against, like, for AK Athens? Like, he's a Champions League level goalkeeper for Athens so yeah if you can get back to that um but we're trying to Celtic obviously try to get deals done fast because obviously tomorrow night Champions League qualifier if somehow a miracle it'll be a miracle if Celtic beat if get through Michelin they're going to have to face PSI, PSV Eindhoven or Galatasaray now Lewis you know about your final batch you know you know a bit about Galatasaray Lewis they're a good side yeah. aren't they uh, yeah they're a pretty good side but if nothing else they're quite an aging side yeah um, but they do have a really good goalkeeper, so. But if nothing else, Midland's star player, their main like striker, is in a bad state of mind and wants to leave the club, and so will not be playing. Yeah. Um, we we'll move on now to some more like kind of transfer kind of talk. Now we'll get we'll get our score predictions of Midland game in end podcast. But Lee Griffiths is apparently wanted by Sunderland as Celtic striker could be handed hmm. a loan chance. Now, all the situation with the police and. In chat, you mentioned it, so he's clear now. But the fact that people are still trying to back him up is to be he could still be a Celtic striker is is out of this what it's like crazy for me, really. To be honest, the fact that he got in this situation, Lewis, yeah, like he lives off a couple good matches, yeah. Um, yeah, Sunderland League One, of course, uh, reporting a, a shock loan move mm-hmm. for Lee Griffiths. Um, Obviously, Griffiths was clear. We won't say anything about past <laughs> Sunderland players. Was cleared by Police Scotland on Wednesday following allegations sent, apparently, to a teenage girl. Mm-hmm. 30 year old has just penned a new one year deal with Celtic before he was sent home from the club's training camp. And now, apparently, the Scottish Sun state he has interest from Sunderland. Um, you know, Ange Postcoglu said, You know how much time I've spent thinking about that? You've asked me and I've just thought about it, mm-hmm. so I don't know. Well, Lewis, I know we've not really talked about it much, even myself on the channel. Um, Liam Shaw, Lewis, um, what have you made of him so far in his Celtic career so far in the pre-season? If you've seen him. I've not seen him at all, so oh. I don't have a comment. Um, well, what I've seen him actually, he's really good, I think. Um, midfield, he's kind of solid. Um, pass the ball's really good, actually. Speaking Wins the ball back, yeah. of the midfield, Sorrow. Sorrow. Oh, we need to talk about Sorrow. <laughs> Mate. He's kind of like going into that role where Scott Brown is. He suits the like midfield totally yeah. perfect. He squeezes back if he needed into that, into a centre back. So yeah. the two centre backs there, and he goes back in the centre back, goes back and just makes it basically a third centre back basically yeah. just to help out. And it's I really like that. It's really good. Um, but what I also find good is Furuhashi. It must have been part obviously the deal because um, he scored on his mm. was it yeah Saturday morning. He scored in his last game for uh, his team. And it was a really good goal, a really good goal. Um, so Ayer is actually set for a medical in Brentford um, with 24 hours. So we could potentially see, obviously, the money coming for Ayer. Starfield was obviously a done deal. It's like 4.4.5 million. Celtic are actually trying to get their finger out and paying money, which I I I like with Celtic. I really like. Finally. Uh, but we'll go into Barcast again. I think it was great to see Barkas in the team yesterday after the ninja scare against Bristol midweek. A couple of decent saves he made I seen Saturday and a good confidence boost ahead of the Michelin game, I think, for the goalkeeper. Mm. Anyway. Let's just hope he gets back to his best. But let's get into the point now, Lewis, um, where people... Well, I did. I, th- I thought it myself. <laughs> I did think it myself, but a, a, a tiny bit. Uh, I don't know about you, Lewis, but people right now think we're going to, we're going to go back to the era where we were getting the Champions League, we were beating Rangers 5-0, we were hammering teams every week, we are playing out of the world, right? We c- Antipos Coglu can't do that in a week. It's impossible, right? 
I don't think that will ever happen again. No. I think the league's just progressed too much yeah. for, now that we have competition again. Um. We're in a tremendous. I've seen like obviously comments over the weekend here that sounds like in a terrible state. It's obviously true, right? But yeah. there's a lot, a lot of work to be done, however. It's not Ange Postecoglou's fault, of course. Yeah. Cause it, because when you go back to it, the board have stuck in Ange Postecoglou from when it was already how, up until the 28th of May. Yeah. On that night, Ange Postecoglou broke out that it was going to be him. And they've just stuck him in. And, and now, now um, I, 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 tw- on less, less than 24 hours until. Champions League qualifier round two against Michelin and we're really vastly unprepared. I'll look at it. I'll show you the team that has been written down um, um, for the Champions League, the, the players that are, are eligible, sorry. But I guess, you know, as fans, you just got to get behind them, the manager. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the league. But obviously, oh, in our okay. league production video, it's we not out yet, but as it's, uh, it's coming out. Soon. When it is out, anyway, yeah. we think Celtic will win the league, and I still do think there's a chance. There is a chance where if Celtic get still get their finger and sign signings and help Ange yeah. Postecoglou, the board actually help them give the money they need. Yeah. There is a chance Celtic could win the league. Exactly. But the board, that's the board, right? They need yeah. to do that. They need to help them, of course, because Celtic are in a situation where we've got, for example, um. We've got, for example, um, you know, a young 21-year-old, a 22-year-old Welsh at back and a centre mid beat on it at the centre-back role. Right back, Ralston. I mean, I've just described our defence in a whole, obviously, Greg Taylor. He's OK, but... For the love of God, just get beat on out of here. Remember when he was our best player, though? Yeah. Those dark times. Uh, so here's the, here's the squad. Here's the registered squad for the Champions League squad. So goalkeepers, we have Barkas, Bain, Duhan and Hazard, because obviously... We don't have any more goalkeepers, right? Um, it's weird that Julian is registered for the Champions League qualifiers, where he's not getting back to September. I'm guessing if, if I'm guessing it's just for in case he gets a Celtic get into the Champions League, he's there. So it's mm. Julian centre backs and sorry defenders. Sorry, it's Julian Taylor, ball and goalie. I have never thought I would see ball and goalie and a Celtic shot in my life ever again after last season. But with a situation we are, we're lacking depth. He just has to play, doesn't he? Hopefully he ends up being decent at least. Yeah, Azazel Degede, Anthony Alson, Leo for Hergelde, who played a loan spell at Ross County last season. He was actually really good, in fact. Um, he was really, actually a really good defender. He's like six foot something. He's alright, actually. Um, midfielder got Beaton, Sorrow. I should say Beaton, but he's actually going to play in defence probably. <laughs> Sorrow, Tom Rogic, Luca Cornell, Liam Shaw, Cam McGregor, James Forrest, Lee Griffiths, Albion Eighty, David Turnbull. Ryan Christie, Mikey Johnson, Orson Edward Lewis. Now, what do you make on that? Lee Griffiths getting picked for the Champions League squad. I don't, that's, an, I, I mean, the lack of depth I get, right, but for like, being... He's useless. Yes. That's what I'm going to say. Basically, what he's done, and I've said this before many times on the channel, he's thrown the contract so many times back in the board's face or the manager's face, which he's done. And, do you know what? It's done them get him. It's a bargain for us. It really is. It really is. Now... As I said, if Celtic beat Mitchell tomorrow night or next week in the round, we'll face PSV PSV Eindhoven or Galatasaray. Uh, Eindhoven and the Netherlands, Lewis, they seem a decent side to be honest. They actually are, they've got guts in there, yeah. Um, We'll get on to the point where Cal McGregor is the new Celtic captain, Lewis. Now, he was probably the the remainder, the the second choice captain last season, probably getting picked a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure he was captain every yeah. time Brown didn't play anyway. The 20 year old midfielder has come through the youth academy like I like to see as a pro- a, prog- a progression mm. at Celtic, I felt. Yeah, like, I felt when he went on loan in Rocks County, I felt is it you know, is McGregor actually gonna be, you know, you know, a team but he is. He, he was really good in fact. Um the only goal of the game he scored was against KR Regovic in Iceland when he scored in a Champions League qualifier. Mm. Um he's gone on to make three hundred and twenty six appearances. Scoring 53 goals and he's won 14 trophies, 6 league titles, 4 Scottish Cups and 4 League Cups. He's also been capped four, uh, 34 times by Scotland, scoring 1 goal in the recent obviously, European Championships against Croatia when he scored one of Scotland's most impressive performers. Um, we'll see what Ange Postco will to say about it. Uh, Callum is a player who leads by example, both on and off in part, which you like to see about a captain. He's the one where he expresses what, where he wants to play, right? Um, but yeah, let's start, start there uh, before we go into the quiz and stuff uh, at the end of the podcast. But 15 goals in 21 games, Lewis. Decent. 
I think it's an absolute steal. Now here's some news. Brighton prepare Celtic offer for Edward after using fifty million from Arsenal for Ben White. So they're getting ready to start playing. Yeah, I think Edward's on the off, I really do. Like, see if he moves to them, he'll be the lethal. That's all Brighton really needs. Yeah. It's a good striker. If Celtic fail to beat Mitchelland, they will drop to third qualifier in the Europa League and will face Jabolerek, uh, who came third in Czech first league, just five points behind Sparta Prague. We all know what happened when Celtic faced them last year. Um, Hard times, man. Yes. Um, but we'll move on, guys. Um, move on now. Um, But Lewis, before we get into the quiz and stuff, guys, it's probably not the, the longest podcast in the world, right? But before we move on to the, the, the quiz of the, the podcast, right, would you make a feel of Ant Postcocker using young players and oh, trying to see what he's got? Potentially when you've seen last season, like, uh, Neil Lennon mm-hmm. hate, basically, I'm not, I'm not going to say hate. Lennon just played yes. snakes. And the only tactic Lennon had was... To stop the park. Yes, basically, yeah. Um, he didn't really have tactics where Ant Postcocker, he's, he's trying something at Celtic and... He's trying his best of what I'm we've got here. I'm liking the attacking sort of thing. Yeah, I like it. It's like one touch pass, you know what I mean? And he, the commentators put it right where, um, it's where that if he if they they have the player have too much in, too many touches of the ball, yeah. they have to make a good pass. Like yeah. they really have to. Um, but I think it's time. Um, hopefully, guys, you've enjoyed the podcast so far. If you have, please subscribe and like, and also share the also share the what do you call it? Video. The, yep, share the video. Out. Um. Just getting the the podcast. The, got to be tuned for the the, the 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 quiz. Sorry. Yeah, Everton. It's a grand old team. Yeah, they have the same the same song as Celtic when they come out. It's a bit weird, isn't it? But I like the prospect of young players coming up. Blues. Yeah. Obviously, they're not going to be. But I like. Um, I don't know if you've seen much yeah. of stats wise. Murray. I, I think it's Adam Murray or something like that. Or Montgomery as well. He's been really good. I feel. He's been really, oh, probably going to play. Good work, man. Mutant. The sponsor, well, the ad. If you want money, if you want the advertiser on this channel, you need to pay up. Welcome to Do You Know Scottish Football? Du, 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 du. It's a grand old team Just get to it. play for. There we go, right. Anyway, so Lewis, we both have seven questions each. How about you just uh, ask me today and I don't ask you, please? Just to make it quicker. Okay. Question one. Va- Vasilis Barkas was signed from which club? Fenerbahce. Hey, Athens. Okay. First point to lose. How old is Scott Bain? 28, 29, 30 or 31? 30. Wrong. 30, 29. Which is the nationality of Connor Hazard? Now there's a trick one Northern here. Northern Ireland. Oh, you've actually got it right. Okay. Three so far. Which squad number is Christopher Julian? Three, two, four or five? Five. Wrong. Number two. Um, what nationality is Chris, Christopher Eyer? Norwegian, Swedish, Danish or Finnish? Norwegian. Okay, five so far. Which year was Stephen Welsh born now? Think of his age, right? I have mentioned it in this video. I have mentioned it. 1999, 2000. 1999. 2001 or 2002? 1999. Wrong, 2000. It's 21. I thought he was 22. Ah, tricked you, you know. Ah, Dago Axel, eh? What club was he on loan from? AC Milan. Correct, six. What month was Gig Taylor born? September, October, November or December? October. November. Hmm. Uh, what club was John Joe Kenny on loan from? Everton. So, okay. Um, how old is Anthony Alson? Tw- 20, 21, 22 or 23? It's 23, isn't it? 22. Which country is near Beton from? Cyprus, Israel, Turkey, uh, Turkey or Greece? Israel. Correct. Which country is Ismala Soro from? Oh, um... Ivory Coast, Ghana. Ivory Knight. Coast. Okay. And who was Luca at Connor most recently on loan with Hamilton Hearts, Queen's Park or Dundee? I was like, who? I never heard Hamilton, of question. Oh, what, who was Luca at Connor most recently on loan with? Now, there's a couple of pictures with him as well, if you've seen him. Hamilton Hearts, Queen's Park or Dundee? Queen's Park. Correct. Lewis, you have got 10 questions out of 10. I felt Lewis. Non-stop well, W's. I think that's a great one. Lewis knows everything you know about Celtic. How you how's your how how do you like Celtic? Eh? Pretty good. <laughs> uh, thanks guys for watching the podcast. Hopefully guys you've enjoyed it. If you have, as I said, subscribe and like, share the video out as usual. If you don't, I'll, I won't get food for the next fifteen days. <laughs> anyway, Please. um, Lewis, before we end the video, 
Score prediction for the first leg of Michelin game tomorrow. 2 1 Celtic. Got to go the same. Got to get, got to get a hope. The 2 1's always a good prediction to make. And there's no away goals anyway, so. Oh, yeah. I hate that, but. Yeah. Don't pay. But anyway. See ya.